Hey, you're not going to catch me snoring this time. This sand, it gets everywhere. A bit like the king of the island of the mighty. He lost his head and ended up in the Tower of London as one of those big black ravens, watching tourists like you eating ice cream. My story starts centuries ago down the beautiful coastline of Harlech, overlooking the rocks, the sand dunes, and the sea. Bran and Branwen. On the high rock of Hadlech, Bendigaid Vran, Bran the Blessed, a man of great stature and king over the island of the mighty, one day sat watching the sea. Towards him on the tide came 13 sailing ships, the shields of their men-at-arms upturned in gestures of peace. In the lead ship was Matholuch, king of all Ireland, who had come to ask for the hand of Branwen, fair sister of King Bran. The British king agreed, and the wedding took place at Aberfrau on Anglesey. But it was held under cover of silken tents, since Bran was so mighty a man that no house could contain him. Now one of Bran's brothers, called Evnissien, was full of mad tricks and hot temper. He had not been consulted about his sister's wedding, and when he chanced upon the Irishman's horses, Evnissian slashed them with his sword, from their noses to their tails, in order to cause trouble. King Bran tried to placate Matholuch. To atone, I shall replace all your maimed horses with healthy ones. Furthermore, I shall give you a cauldron of rebirth. Throw your dead warriors into its depths, and they shall be whole and hale on the morrow. Accepting this, Matholuch and Branwen departed with their gifts to Ireland. At first all went well, and a son was born to the couple. But in the second year, rumours spread about Evnissien's villainy, so that Matholuch was laughed at behind his back and derided to his face. Fearing his court's ridicule, he avenged himself on his wife. She was forced to work in the kitchens and the cook had orders to box her ears every day. In secret, Branwen reared a starling and taught it to recognize her brother. Then she fastened a letter underneath the bird's wing and sent it flying towards Wales. At Carnarvon, the bird discovered the king. Incensed, he mustered a large army and a fleet of many ships and set off for Ireland. Yet, since Bran was so mighty a man that no ship could contain him, he waded across the sea. As the king strode towards Ireland, Matholuch and his men retreated beyond the river Llinon, burning down the bridge behind them. But Bran said, let him who leads be a bridge, and he stretched himself across the river so that his army could march over him. Quickly, the Irishmen hatched a plan. They would promise to invest Branwen's young son, Gwern, with the sovereignty of Ireland in the presence of her brother, What's more, they would build a great hall, especially for the ceremony, since the king was so mighty a man that until now, no house could contain him. This idea pleased Bran, and building began. However, the Irishman also prepared a trap. On both sides of 100 pillars, within the hall, a sack was hung concealing a warrior in waiting. Evnissien came in first, but he knew that old trick, and he squeezed the sacks containing every assassin 
till not one was left alive. Then both nations entered the hall and sat down, each to one side. But when Guern met his new relatives, he was slow to greet Evnissian, whose warm blood had not been cooled by the sea journey. Evnissian caught up his nephew and tossed him into the fire. At once every man drew his sword and leapt into battle. The Irishman dragged in the cauldron of rebirth and lit a fire under it, so that their dead warriors, when thrown into it, would be whole and hale on the morrow. Evnissian saw this, and, full of remorse, he played his last joke. By lying down amongst the Irish bodies, he too was cast into the cauldron. He stretched himself out, the iron pot burst asunder, and his heart burst open. To the island of the mighty, only Branwen and seven sound men returned. Branwen broke her heart in despair, and she was buried on Anglesey beneath a standing stone on the banks of the Avon Alau. During the battle, King Bran's foot had been stabbed by a poisoned spear. As he lay dying, he bid his attendants, cut off my head and bury it on the white mount of London, facing towards France. While it remains there, no harm shall come to the island of the mighty from across the sea. That is why, even today, birds are kept at the Tower of London. Bran means crow in Welsh, in accordance with the prophecy of King Bran. For without them, the White Tower and the British monarchy will fall. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it.